Okay, good afternoon, and I am back here today with another video. Now, this video that I'm going to do today is going to be more of a movie review. And it's going to be a movie review on a movie called The Deadly Silver Spear. Now, the reason why I chose this is because it is a Shaw Brothers film, and it's pretty obscure. I don't think... I don't know, I, I didn't check, but I don't think anyone has ever done a YouTube video reviewing it before. It's kind of an obscure film, kind of a strange film to some degree. And it is a Shaw Brothers film. And for those who don't know, the Shaw Brothers was a uh, Hong Kong studio that made Kung Fu films in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, I think, and, you know, beyond. And... <clears throat> A lot of their films were based on, and I hope I'm saying this right, but uh, Wuxia literature. And what that was, was that was a uh, literature style that they had that was usually centered around a hero who would go on some sort of a mission. You know, sometimes that mission was to avenge his master, sometimes he was this kind of righteous titan, you know, mercenary, sometimes... He would be off trying to learn some kind of real deadly kung fu technique. But uh, usually that's what it would be centered around. And a lot of times in the literature as well as the movies, you would have the hero or you would have throughout the movie a lot of the more mythical elements of the martial arts, such as characters being able to jump 50 feet high, uh, characters having real powerful chi punches, characters being able to walk on walls and ceilings, characters that could do, you know, no-touch punches, and just all sorts of things like that, you know, dim mock death touches, you know, things that would incorporate, like I said, the more mythical aspects of the martial arts. And, you know, that's what you have in a lot of these movies and literature. Now, this movie, the main protagonist, is a character played by the name of Jimmy Wang Yu. Now, Jimmy Wang Yu did a lot of these martial arts films. Uh, even though he actually didn't have any formal training in the martial arts. Apparently, he was an elite level swimmer. And just didn't have training in the martial arts. But then, he got into acting in these movies and... He developed a style and, you know, did eventually become pretty convincing as a martial artist on film. Uh, you know, he certainly wasn't like a Bruce Lee or a Chuck Norris or a Jackie Chan. But like I said, he did look pretty convincing on film. But uh, he's the main protagonist in this movie, a character by the name of the Silver Spear. And he's called that because his weapon is this retractable silver spear it could detract to be about the size of you know a sword that you could hold in one hand or you could retract it and it could be the size of a normal length spear that you you would use with two hands anyways he's a mercenary and he goes to see this woman who's like this mysterious clan leader you don't really know too much about this woman but you could kind of assume that she's probably very wealthy. And she sends him on a mission to kill three guys known as the Devil's Three. Now, I know that sounds like something right out of a Tarantino film. <laughs> I, I know, but uh, that's what these guys are called, like the Devil's Three. And he says he'll do it only on two conditions, if the price is right and if the guys deserve it. Well, she gives him a lot of money, so... The price is right, and <laughs> I mean, they don't really get into whether or not the guys deserve it or not. I guess you're supposed to assume that they do deserve it. Kind of thought that was a little bit of a plot glitch. They probably should have explained that the guys deserved it just to make the hero seem a little more righteous. But anyways, he goes after these guys. First, he faces the first one of the Devil's Three who is able to, you know, swim underwater, and he's supposedly invincible underwater, but he defeats him right away. 
The next, the silver spear faces the second of the devil's three, and that's this hermit who lives in a cave with an eye patch over one of his eyes, but he's really proficient with using these, uh, you know, hatchets. And he fights that guy. He, the silver spear actually gets wounded, but he does end up killing the hermit with the axes. Next is this, like, sorceress who lives in a mortuary. He goes after her. There's a lot of, like, horror imagery here in this scene. And a lot of it kind of seems like it would be more Eastern European, maybe like Transylvania. You know, you hear, like, wolves howling and stuff. Sort of feels a little out of place in a film that's set in the Far East. But, anyways, he fights this character... He gets bit by a snake, but he ends up killing the character. Before she dies, she tells him that he has two hours to live. However, they end that plot element right there. They never ex go on. They never have him try to find a cure or anything. They just sort of sever that plot element. And that, you know, that's one of the glitches of the film. You know, they should have at least explained something about that, and they didn't. So then after that, he goes back to the woman clan leader, and she pays him. But then she sends him out on another mission to go after this hermit who lives in a palace up in the mountains in kind of a snowy area. And he agrees. He goes up, you know, into the mountains and gets to the snowy area where he fights these guys that kind of look like snow ninjas. You know, he manages to defeat them, but they could kind of like blend into the snow real, really well, so they're hard to see. But he ends up defeating these guys. He gets up to the palace. Now, this hermit who lives in this palace has abducted this guy who was a silversmith. And the reason why he abducted him was because he wanted the silversmith to build him this like super weapon known as the Death Rings. Because if he could have the death rings in his possession, he could become the master of all martial arts with the death rings. So the silversmith builds him the death rings. You know, no one had built this thing in ten years. When it was last built, it, like, destroyed an entire village. You know, and what the death rings is, is, well, okay, if there was a list of the ten most bizarre weapons in Shaw Brothers films... This Death Rings has to be near the top. Uh, what it basically is, is it's kind of like a top, where you kind of pull a string on it, and it like flies out, kind of like a drone, and it decapitates anyone who gets near it, because it kind of has like a circular saw blade around it. It's kind of circular, and sort of like, well, sort of like an ancient Chinese drone, in a lot of ways. But uh, yeah, called the Death Rings. So, you know, that's what you got to love about these movies, you know, when they have stuff like that in these films. But, uh, anyways, he builds this thing, and uh, the main prota the protagonist, the Silver Spear, makes his way to the palace. Uh, first, he fights the main henchman in this room that has a lot of ropes in it that catch flame. That's probably the best fight scene in the movie. Because there's all these ropes, they're all on fire, and they're dodging these ropes falling down while they're fighting each other. It, it's just kind of a cool scene. Then, after that, he has to deal with the Death Rings. And this Death Rings thing is coming at him. Like I said, things like this mechanical drone thing. It's kind of based on something from another movie called Master of the Flying Guillotine, which also had... Jimmy Wang Yu in it, but in that, you know, the uh, guillotine is, like, attached to, like, a uh, chain, but in this, you know, it's different. This thing is more like a robotic drone type thing, you know, it sort of almost has kind of a mind of its own in a way, but I kind of think maybe the person operating it and holding the main, you know, stick that it's on maybe has control of it. I, that I don't know, but... Anyways, this thing comes right toward the main protagonist, the Silver Sphere. And right when it gets kind of close to him, he takes a cloth and throws it up underneath it. And it gets caught in its gears and the thing 
crashes to the ground. And he then takes the, you know, this death rings and he throws it at the old hermit, killing him. And he frees the silversmith. And he also frees the silversmith's daughter, who had also had been abducted as well. And then the movie ends. Now, ultimately, I thought this was a good film. I think a lot of these Shaw Brothers films are really quite excellent. I, I know in the West, a lot of people will kind of belittle them and make fun of them, largely because of the dubbing and all that. But if you can get past some bad dubbing and whatnot, you'd actually find that these films are actually quite excellent when you get into them, you know. But, you have, like I said, you have to get past the dubbing. And, you know, I know that dubbing has been kind of a mockery in, like, the 80s and 90s. You'd see it in a lot of comedy shows and stuff. But, uh, you know, and, you know, if, if like I said, if you can get past that, you'd see that this is actually quite an excellent film. A lot of these movies are, you know. So, I, I do definitely recommend it. It's kind of a fun movie to watch. You know, called The Deadly Silver Spear. And, yeah, so, you know, another thing that I do want to mention that I do like a lot about these, you know, Shaw Brothers films is I definitely like a lot of the set designs. And the set designs are excellent in, in all these films. As is the scenery, the costumes, the weapons. I mean, they're, they're just cool films, you know. Like I said, if you could just get past some of the dubbing, you, you would see that. You know, most people would see that and they, you know, wouldn't mock the movies so much. But, yeah, like I said, you know, definitely a good film to check out if you haven't seen it. The Deadly Silver Sphere. That's all I have for now. If you watch this video, again, as I always say, I thank you for watching.